Hello and welcome. This is CBSE Class 10 Daily Math video. And in today's video, we are going to learn about these, how to solve these types of problems. Prove that the following numbers are irrational numbers. Numbers such as square root 3, numbers such as 3 times square root 5, and 5 minus square root 7. So from our previous grades, we have learned why these are irrational numbers. We have learned I should rather say that these numbers are irrational numbers and we have studied them from a standpoint that the decimal expansions they do not terminate and they do not repeat but today we are going to find out how we can prove that these are irrational numbers so let's get started now one very important thing to keep in mind is that these type of questions they will carry typically three marks in your final board exams so this, the answer solution to these problems will be fairly longer than the one mark, two mark problems. Now let's go ahead and figure out for each one of them how will we approach such problems. It is very important to keep in mind that we will use this particular theorem very exhaustively when we prove such questions. The theorem goes like this. If P divides A square, meaning A, what is A? A is any positive integer. So a is some positive integer and it is given that a squared divide a squared can be divisible by p. What it means is that when we do this division we get remainder as zero. If this is true, if this is true, it automatically means that's what this theorem is saying. It automatically means that the number a must also be divisible by p. So when we do this division we will get remainder zero. So if a square is divisible by p it automatically means that a is divisible by p or in other words that a has p as one of the factors now this follows from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic so i will not go into too much of detail here but let me know in the comments below if you want me to explain this i'll give you one pointer though in from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic we know that all composite numbers can be expressed as product of prime numbers. So if P1, P2, P3, if they are prime numbers, so we can write every single composite number as a product of prime numbers and we can write them in only one unique way. So this is actually used. So then when we square it, so this, each of the uh, prime numbers will then be squared and if this is divisible by p that means if this is divisible by p it simply means that one of these prime numbers has to be p anyway now let's go ahead and take a look at each of these three problems and figure out how do we solve them now the first problem is square how do we prove square root 3 is a irrational number so we will solve these problems by a technique known as by contradiction. Contradictions means opposite. So we are going to assume the opposite. If we have to prove this to be an irrational number, we will say, let us assume that this is a rational number. In that case, we can represent, we know all rational numbers, we can express them in the form of P by Q, where PQ are co-prime and Q is not equal to zero. Quickly, let's review what is a co-prime. Are the numbers two and three, two by three co-prime? They are co-prime. But what about say 4 by 6. Is 4 by 6 co-prime? It is not because we can write 4 as 2 times 2 and we can write 3 as 2 times 3. We, we can write 6 as 2 times 3. And now both 4 and 6, they share a common factor 2. If we remove the common factor, then what we are left with, it is co-prime. So in other words, co-prime, they don't share any common factors. So we assume that square root 3 is a rational number such that we can express that in the form of p by q where pq and co prime and q is not equal to 0. Next what we will do, we will square both sides. So we will do, here we have this, so we are going to square both the sides. So we will get like this and here we will get 3 equal to this will be p square by q square. Or let's write it over here. So we have q squared. Let's take the q squared over there and let's get 3 here. 
So Q squared is equal to P squared I3. We have just learned that if P squared is divisible by 3, so because we know that Q is an integer, Q squared is an integer, and because the left hand side is an integer, that means the right hand side must be integer. And in order for the right side to be integer, P squared must be divisible by 3. And from the theorem before we learned, if P squared is divisible by 3, that means P is divisible by 3, or in other words, P can be expressed as 3 times something. So let's use this to replace P. So we have now Q squared is equal to, instead of P, we will write this like that, and then we have the denominator 3. So this will be squared. So what happens here? So we have Q squared equal to, let's open this up, it will be 3 squared times A squared, 3 squared, let's write it here, 3 squared times a squared divided by 3 or we have q squared is equal to so one of the threes will cancel out we'll be left with 3 times a squared now from here we can write this as let's do it over here a squared is equal to so we are going to bring the 3 down here a squared will be equal to q squared by 3 so we again have a similar situation like the way we had it before if q squared so because a is an integer, we know that it means q squared must be divisible by 3 and we should get an integer. And if that were to ha happen, then q must be divisible by 3 or q we can write it as 3 times b where b is some integer. So what we see is the number p can be written like this meaning it is 3 times a where a is an integer and we see that q is written like this 3 times b where b is an integer. In other words, both p and q, they share a common factor which is 3. But we assume that p and q are co-prime, that is they do not have the common factor, they have no common factor. But we see that we do see the number 3 as a common factor. So this occurs because we made an incorrect assumption. This contradiction occurs because we made an incorrect assumption. And our assumption was that square root 3 is a rational number. So our assumption is wrong and hence square root 3 is an irrational number. So this is how we prove such problems. Now let's take a look at the one which is a little bit different variation of this. So let's go ahead. So now we have to prove 3 square root 5 is an irrational number. Now in the exam, if you are given a question, sometimes they may, to make it easier, they may say, well, use the fact that square root 5 is an irrational number. So if it is given, it becomes easier. So our approach is going to be the same. So we will prove such problems by contradiction. So we will assume that 3 square root 5, let's assume this to be a rational number and then we can express all rational number in the form of p by q where p, q are co-prime and q is not equal to 0. Our goal will be to isolate the square root term by itself on the left side. So how can we do that? Well, we can simply divide both sides by 3 to remove the 3 here. So then what we have, we have square root 5 on the left side is equal to here we have p divided by 3q. Now we know that p is an integer and q is an integer. If q is an integer then 3q will also be an integer. So on the right side we have an integer divided by an integer and we know if we have a situation like this, this is a rational number. But it is given that square root 5 is an irrational number. So a irrational number cannot be equal to a rational number. So this contradiction happens because we made an incorrect assumption that 3 square root 5 is a rational number. Our assumption is wrong and hence 3 square root 5 is an irrational number. Now let's talk about the fact if it is not given that square root 5 is an irrational number, how do we solve it then? Well, we will solve it in exactly the same way except it will be a little bit lengthier but let's go ahead and get started with that. So we will assume that Let's assume 3 square root 5 is a rational number. Then we can write this in the form of p by q where p, q are co-prime and q not equal to 0. Then we are going to divide both sides by 3 to isolate the square root term on the left side. 
So we are left with square root 5 equals p by 3 q. At this stage, we are going to square both the sides. So what will we get? So here we will get 5 equal to, here numerator will be p square, denominator will be 3 square times q square, or simply it will be p square by 9 q square. Now we will take the q square on the top left side. Let's do it over here. So we will have q square equal to, and on the right side we will have p square divided by, so we will take the q square on this side, we will bring the 5 here. So we will have q square equals p square by, so we have already 9 here and the 5 comes down, or we have this as p square by 45. We have just learned from the theorem below, above, uh, earlier that if, so here q, q is an integer, so q square is an integer, that means p square must be fully divisible by 45. And we have learned from the theorem earlier that if p square is divisible by 45, that means p must be divisible by 45, or we can express p as 45 times something, let's call it times a. So we will replace p by this number. So we have q square equals 45 times a square, which is p square, by 45. Or this will be p square, q square equals 45 square times a square divided by 45. So one of the 45 will cancel out, so we will be left with q square equals 45 times a square. Now we will bring the 45 here, so let's do it uh, over here. So we will be left with a square equals q square by 45. Now just like before over here, if q square, so a is an integer, so this will be an integer, and that means that q square must be divisible by 45. If q squared is divisible by 45, then q must be divisible by 45. That means we can express q as 45 times some integer, say b. So what we see here is that q can be expressed as 45 times an integer. And we have seen that p can be expressed as 45 times some integer. So in other words, we see that both p and q, they share a common factor 45. But this contradicts our assumption that P and Q are co-prime. So this contradiction happens because our assumption was wrong and our assumption was that 3 square root 5 is a rational number and that assumption is wrong. So 3 square root 5 has to be an irrational number. Let's take a look at the last and final variation of these type of problems. 5 minus square root 7, we have to prove that this is an irrational number. So we will do the exact same thing. So we will assume that this is a rational number. So we will write this as p by q, where both p and q are co-prime and q not equal to 0. And then we are going to isolate the square root term by itself on the left side. So we are going to subtract 5 from both sides. So we will get, it will look like this. So we are going to subtract 5 from both sides. And this will be p by q minus 5. So here the 5 and 5 will cancel out. We'll be left with minus square root 7 equal to. So here we will have 5. I should say p minus 5q divided by q. Now we are going to multiply both sides by minus 1 to remove this negative sign from here. Like this, we are going to multiply this by minus 1. So when we do, let's do it over here. So we will have simply square root 7 equal to, so because we are sub multiplying by minus 1, the sub, so this will reverse, so the plus will become minus and minus will become plus 5q minus p by q. Now, we can prove this is irrational. Just the way we did before square root 2 is irrational, square root 3 is irrational. So we know that left hand side is irrational number and because p and q are integers, here we have an integer divided by an integer which actually is rational. So we have a situation where a irrational number is equal to a rational number which we know 
it is false it cannot happen and this contradiction occurs because we made an incorrect assumption that this is a rational number so our assumption is wrong and hence 5 minus square root 7 is indeed an irrational number so i hope you are following us along if not please click the subscribe button and also please uh, click the bell icon so every day when we publish videos like this you are going to be immediately notified if you enjoy the video give us thumbs up and share with your friends